So um, I'm your substitute host this week. My name is Lori. Just a few technical details that you've probably heard before, but please bear with me. Um, this program is being recorded. Um, and I'm going to ask all of you while we're in the program to please mute yourself so that we don't get the, all that kind of feedback you can get. And then during the Q&A period, if you wish to unmute yourself because you want to say something, that's certainly fine. Um, I've put the phrases, your, I think it's five phrases in the chat box, so they are there for you to look at. And if there's anything else you're having any difficulty or you have a question or whatever, you could put the, uh, that in the chat box as well, and I'll be monitoring that. While I, we're I don't speaking. see them there, Lori, actually, in my chat. Do other people see the phrases in your chat box? Let's see. I don't see them. Yeah. Not in mine. No? I see them in mine. Um, I'll, send, <laughs> I'll send them again. It'll give me something to do. I'll send them again. Um, and the probably the best thing for you all to do now, and I'm going to do it too, is to adjust your view instead of to gallery view to speaker view so that you can see Ruth rather than um, everybody in the thing. But I will put those phrases in. And as I said, just if there's something you need to say, just say it in the chat. I'm going to put the phrases in again. I think it just went to who was ever here early when I did it before the class. So I'll put them in again. All right. So you Great. can start whenever you're ready. And yeah, thank we you are coming. recording. We are recording the session. So like I appreciate yeah. having your your pictures on um, for me. But if anybody's uncomfortable with that, feel free to turn the video off. Um, I'd like to see your faces as I'm talking. Anyway, um, I am Ruth, as I guess you all know. Thank you very, Lori, very much for, um, you know, pitching in at the last minute here for Bram. And um, let's just take a moment and settle ourselves in the space together for just a couple minutes of practice to begin. So, um, let me just check my audio session. Yes. Okay. So hopefully my, my settings are on. So the bell will sound like a bell and let's, um, close our eyes for a moment and just arrive together. We're feeling each other's presence right now, all of us join together in this time, steadying ourselves together, showing up. Landing in the body, in the space where you are, and in this virtual space together. Noticing the energy in the body, noticing any thoughts, any leftover from the day you've just had. And opening to that, not having to change anything, but relaxing into however you are right now. Taking a few deep breaths, inviting the body to relax a little bit more, just releasing any tension that you can easily release. Breathing in, breathing out, feeling the body sitting, hearing what you're hearing. Practicing opening to the next moment over and over again. Arriving right here.
So welcome everybody. I will begin like last time with a short talk and an exercise. I hope you got the message to bring a pencil and paper because you, you know, like it's optional, but you might like to use them. We're going to do a little exercise tonight and, and then a longer practice together with the phrases like last time. Um, so just to again remind you to listen like listen with your whole self your whole body letting the words resonate with what resonates with you and not um sort of letting go of anything that doesn't resonate with you basically like just seeing what feels like it's drawing you in and letting other things go and just to review what we went over last time, the phrases all involve acceptance, that word acceptance. And I went over last time sort of what that is about, um, what it, what I'm, the way I'm using it here as really just surrendering to right now as it is, noticing that it's here already there's really no choice about the present all the non-acceptance that we're in the habit of doing is in our minds like the mind comparing the present to some imaginary other that it might be and that we really don't need to do that all the time maybe that we can there's another option of just being quiet with what's going on, not arguing with it, not trying to improve things, not getting into our heads about how things can improve, but really just experiencing life. There's the what I'm other words that can describe this this quality of acceptance and what the experience of it is like is it's aliveness. It's receptivity to what's happening now it's an openness to what's happening right now without struggling with it so there is relaxation you know all these words that sort of point towards the experience i am suggesting can be a source of steadiness for us in the midst of all the change and the chaos and the uncertainty and the worries and the anxieties that we think about and um, really live in a lot of the times, living on, in our heads. We, we have that frequent experience. We're living in our thoughts, overthinking. And this is pointing towards, and the practices are sort of ways of tuning into those that experience that's possible of relaxing into the moment as it is. So today I wanted to talk about why you might want to do this more and more specifically about the two first two phrases that we we have repeated in the meditation, which is may I accept myself as I am and also may I accept others as they are. And I just realized I was leaning forward and tense and I'm sitting back and relaxing <laughs> as we speak. Um, so why would we want to accept ourselves and why would we want to accept others? It, isn't it, we're, we're usually on some self-improvement path, you know, progress, making progress. And there is usually something that we're not liking in ourselves at some point, some qualities, some action that we do, um, some reaction that we have that we feel is not the best. So why accept ourselves and why accept other people? Other people are, you know, like they're annoying and they're you know, misguided a lot of times and they're because they, we're all human, right? So everybody has lots of imperfections. And so what, why do this? 
when it seems like it makes more sense to try to make life better, make the world a better place, make ourselves better people. Like why not be doing that at all? You know, why like acceptance is not about, it's about like really not changing in the moment what's going on. And the reason I wanted to talk about just briefly before we do the exercise is that it doesn't work very well to judge ourselves, to criticize ourselves, to criticize others, to argue with ourselves or try to control ourselves or to try and control others or argue with others. It tends to backfire in my experience and it, this is for you to check against your own experience always. But my sense is that when you're dealing with a conflict inside yourself, like you want, you don't accept some part of yourself, you're divided inside. And there's a way, like, it's like no part can kind of can win. A part can win for a while and suppress another part, but it's not, there's, there's a way that you're leaving out you. Like, you, you, you can't leave out you. It, it just doesn't work very well. And it tends to just make you feel like you're struggling with yourself and in conflict with yourself, which is a drain on the energy system. And it makes it hard for you to, to move forward in any direction in a wholehearted way when you're, when you're divided against yourself. So it really kind of doesn't work. And often what will happen is these internal parts of you get increasingly polarized as you, you know, one sort of takes over. Often the critical part will take over and suppress another part that feels shameful or feels it bad in some ways or not enough. And it doesn't help like as it gets more critical, as it gets more controlling, the other part can just be get more and more whatever the way that's not accepted, just be, not being heard. It gets more polarized. And the same thing happens with other people where if you're judging or criticizing or arguing, it tends to bring up defensiveness, counter arguments. It just doesn't seem to work very well a lot of the time and it increases polarization, which is definitely what we're seeing in our culture right now, the increased ex extremes in the political sphere. And it's very hard to get out of that because it, it's very natural for us to be non-accepting, basically, of the other. Um, so, what I'd like to present as another option is this possibility of really relaxing with things as they are. Realizing that things are changing anyway, like this kind of acceptance, it's not about things not moving and not, you know, like it's not about complacency, and, but it's about trusting that actually opening, receiving what is, not struggling against what is, not arguing with what is, actually can allow movement in a different way. I think when you get fed up enough uh, with judgment not working and with it actually disconnecting you from yourself and disconnecting you from other people and creating this, these extremes of polarization, Maybe you could be, you know, have a willingness or an interest in seeing what happens if you can really, really just listen and see what's here with that intent to understand rather than to change it. And just as an, of like a, a feeling experiment, feeling in yourself, what it's like for you, if you've ever, I hope you have had this experience of somebody just listening to you. 
just accepting you, just allowing you to be how you are and not trying to change you. It creates a relaxation that then can allow a more natural movement to occur. So I hope it's it's sort of it can expi inspire you that this is worth practicing, worth trying. Um, so if you could, we're going to do an experiment now, which is an exercise in that to give you a flavor, a very particular flavor. So um, you can choose either an inner conflict or a conflict you might have with another person and to, to be the focus of the exercise. And the exercise is really about bringing caring attention to both sides of that conflict, either, either both sides of the inner conflict or both sides of the conflict with another person. And we're going to start with the critical part, you know, like the the you if you're doing with, so, with somebody else, and or the the part of you that is not accepting of another part of you. So, if I, it, does this make sense to people? Like, nod or give me a thumbs up if it makes sense so far. When I'm okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Anybody having trouble like finding conflict? The two. It doesn't have to be a, like a hard conflict, but I think <laughs> we, we, we all have some kind of conflicts. Um, so just, okay, so let's begin by just closing our eyes for a second. Recentering, regrounding, feeling your feet in the floor, feeling the intention to bring caring attention to both sides of this, to really step out of the conflict yourself. Part of what we're doing with acceptance and openness is expanding who we are into that space of awareness. So the intention to contact just the willingness right now to connect, to listen, to understand. And first just acknowledging the two parts of yourself or yourself and the other. Acknowledging the conflicts and that intention not in this time to try to change anything about it. Not to try to resolve it, not to try to get anywhere else, not to try to change any part of the conflict, but just to learn about it. With an attention, taking paper if you want it, or you can still just do this in your head if you prefer. I tried it myself and I like the paper and pencil, which is why I offered them. Um, and beginning with the critical part of this, um, of yourself or yourself in relation to the person, the non-accepting part. And First, listening to what that part might say, what thoughts come up, what are its opinions, beliefs, wants, you know, like just writing down anything you hear that this part is saying to you and trying to understand where it's coming from. Like seeing if you can open to what it's saying with an open heart, really not judging this part, but just listening.
see if you can get this part, like really get it. So I'll give you a minute or two. And listening also now to the emotions this part might have. And feeling into the body what the emotions might feel like in the body. What are the body sensations that accompany these feelings and these beliefs and thoughts? You know, that willingness to feel the body, to feel the feelings. To understand this part as fully as you can. And if you give me a, a sign, if you feel complete with that. So after doing this, like just repeating, may I accept myself as I am? I'm just saying that to yourself right now, accepting this part as wholeheartedly as you can. Surrounding this part of you with that sense of spaciousness and understanding. Relaxing with the inner critic or the critic, the one who judges the other or has a problem with the other, allowing it to be there. And then letting that go into the space of the awareness and bringing forward, turning towards the other, the part that's not accepted in you or the other that you are not accepting who's another person. And when, if this is another person, you might have to use your imagination to imagine the thoughts, what the other person is saying. You might hark back to other conversations you've had, but just listening to the non-accepted part of you, the part that's harder for you to accept and having that part come forward or the other person you don't accept come forward and speak to you. And being in that place of listening, allowing, not trying to fix or change this part either. And as you hear the words, feeling the feelings of that other part, of the other person, seeing if you can imagine how that other person is feeling. In the conflict. Really getting also what's hard for you to accept, trying to understand it, like stepping out of the part that's not accepting into a more open, allowing space, not arguing or struggling with it, but trying to see as much as you can. Feeling the feelings, are you willing to really look at and empathize with that part of you or that other? Just 
And when you're complete with that, just relaxing back. Saying, may I accept myself as I am. May I accept others as they are. May I accept you as you are. If you'd like to say, may I accept you as you are, even talking to another part of yourself, sometimes that's helpful. And seeing if you can be comfortable now with that conflict being there. Just allowing it to be held, both parts to be held in the space of your awareness of your kindness right now. So before we go into the meditation together, I wanted to give you an opportunity to ask questions of about the exercise or share anything that struck you or that was maybe um, confusing. If anybody wants to unmute themselves or just put something, a question in the chat. It's an opportunity to do that now for a moment. So if not, we can um, go right into the meditation practice now. And I hope that that exercise did help you get a sense of what you're saying to yourself with the phrases. The phrases we'll use again are, may I accept myself as I am, may I accept others as they are, may I accept things as they are, may I accept each joy, and may I accept each sorrow. And it's about that intention to step into that space of awareness, openness, steadiness, relaxation, however things are right now. And so in the practice, repeating the phrases can be setting. It's like focusing on the breath and other meditations, focusing on the feet touching the floor or on sounds. It's an object for the mind to rest on. And of course, the mind will move away from it in, at some point during the 15, 20 minutes we practice. And so the practice today is to bring that caring attention when you notice the mind has moved away. It's all part of the practice. That is this moment when you notice it. And to bring that same caring attention, that same intention to come from a space of acceptance and openness. No matter what's going on, if you're with the phrases, great. If you're not with the phrases, not a problem. It's nature. The nature of the mind is to wander to a certain extent. And you're, giving, you're teaching it how to remain more steady. But the mind is not going to be steady. It's OK. Um, bring it, bring in that. Um, oh, it's OK to the mind, that understanding to the mind. So let's begin the practice. Um, again, close your eyes, I'll ring the bell. Starting with a breath or two, just breathing in deeply. Connecting with the body right now. releasing any tension that easily releases. Remember, this practice is about relaxing. Relaxing into what is. And the body sometimes just needs that invitation.
Feeling the whole body sitting. The chair supporting you, the feet on the floor. Letting the mind settle right now in this moment right here. And noticing any argument. Sometimes there are very subtle arguments with what's happening right now. A little discomfort, a little wanting things to be a little different. And listening to that part without trying to change it. Relaxing around it, letting it be held in the space, and then seeing what happens next, opening to the next moment. Letting life flow through the space of the awareness right now. Body sensations appearing, disappearing, thoughts appearing and disappearing. Sounds appearing and disappearing. Letting yourself occupy the space and the quiet. within which all experiences come and go. And when you're ready, turning to the phrases, with that intention to cultivate acceptance, to find that space of acceptance, the steadiness of relaxing with what is. May I accept myself as I am, tuning into how you are and with that intention. May I accept others as they are, May I accept things as they are. May I accept each joy and may I accept each sorrow. giving yourself permission with these phrases to relax. To stop struggling. To see what new you might see with that permission. And repeating the phrases to yourself as it suits you. If you have another practice that feels more nourishing right now, feeling free to do that instead. We're trying this if you're willing, if you're interested, if it feels right. May I accept myself as I am. May I accept others as they are. May I accept things as they are. 
May I accept each joy and may I accept each sorrow. Staying attuned to the body through the practice. The body relaxing, the mind relaxing, not striving too hard to get anywhere or to feel anything particular. But just letting that intention carry you to relax, to accept, to open, to connect. And to let things happen on their own. The mind moves away. They're greeting that movement with caring attention. Noticing that's the nature of the mind. May you accept the mind as it is. Not struggling against it, not regretting it going away. Just seeing it as a nature. What happens? And then returning the praises as an anchor for the mind, a place for the mind to learn to rest, to let go of control and change and trying to get anywhere in particular. But for this time, resting. And the intention to experience this moment to join with life rather than dividing it up. Continuing to tune into the body, 
Relaxing the mind. Noticing any struggle with this moment, the practice, any sleepiness or restlessness, any doubts or desires coming up or aversion to what's going on and seeing if you can include whatever's there. Bringing that willingness to feel it and then letting it go into the space, into the next moment, seeing what happens next. Letting go over and over again of what just happened and emerging into the next moment. Seeing what the next phrase is like, keeping the phrases fresh, the meaning of the words landing in the body. in touch with their aliveness, moment to moment, the aliveness in the body, the aliveness in the mind. May I accept myself as I am. May I accept others as they are. May I accept things as they are right now. May I accept each joy, and may I accept each sorrow. Making life whole. In the last couple of minutes of the sitting, just renewing your intention for this time. Connecting with the phrases, if that has resonated with you. Connecting with that felt sense of opening and connecting. Listening from the quiet. This is from Lao Tzu, the Tao Te Ching. Empty yourself of everything. Let the mind rest at peace. The 10,000 things rise and fall while the self watches their return. They grow and flourish and then return to the source. Returning to the source is stillness, which is the way of nature. The way of nature is unchanging. Knowing constancy is insight. 
Not knowing constancy leads to disaster. Knowing constancy, the mind is open. With an open mind, you will be open-hearted. Being open-hearted, you will act royally. Being royal, you will attain the divine. Being divine, you will be at one with the Tao. Being at one with the Tao is eternal. And though the body dies, the Tao will never pass away. So for another moment, connecting with that stillness, peace, letting the 10,000 things inside right now rise and fall, inside and out. Connecting with that possibility of constancy. May all beings have peace of mind. May all beings have openness of heart. May all beings learn relaxation of acceptance. So we have a few minutes for sharing questions, anything that came up for you that you'd like to um, talk about. You can unmute yourself or put something in the chat if you prefer. Um, don't all speak at once. <laughs> you just start talking. If you... um, I heard. Um... I read something the other day about listening, trying to remember it. Mm -hmm. uh, when something like some people listen to understand, most people listen to answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that uh, stuck with me. Yes, yes. Thank you. But yeah, this was what about listening to understand, which is it's a very different mode rather than listening to figure out what you're going to say next, you know. Thank you. I would be curious if anybody would share about the um, exercise if it was if you learned anything, if it fell, fell flat, like feedback would be appreciated also, as well as any questions you might have had. I just found it was a good way you explained first. Can you hear me okay? No, we just okay. wanted to say. Wait a sec. So Mary Ellen. Was, I wrote a conflict that I Wait, wait a sec, wait, Dorothy, can you a second, wait a second? The a conflict I have with myself. Oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah, can you wait a second, Dorothy? I guess we had two at once, and, and can Mary Lee Allen go first, and then I'll then you, Dorothy, okay? Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't even notice. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's okay. Um, okay, sure. Thanks, sorry. 
Well, when you, so Mary Ellen, yeah. When you were explaining it first about, you know, whether it's an inner conflict or a conflict with another person and just not trying to fix it, not trying to, but just trying to accept it and let it be. It was kind of hard to wrap my mind around, but when you, you know, I did go get paper and pencil and that I thought would really help me to try to do what you were saying, like just writing down those, those, those um, topics. And then I, I, I did think it was a good exercise is what I'm saying. So thank you, it right. helped me. Good, good. That's um, thank you. Um, I'm I'm glad because that's I think sometimes writing down does give you a little more ability to, you know, sort of remove yourself from that position sometimes. Yeah. Okay, Dorothy, you yeah. have. Uh, similarly, when I was writing in the beginning, I I wrote of of a conflict I an ongoing conflict I have with myself, which is of. Um, setting goals for myself and um, feeling let down when I don't fulfill them, which, you know, some days I don't have the energy to fulfill them. Sometimes I do. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've come a long way already as far as just um, letting it go when I, when I don't. Mm -hmm. But I did want to ask you, I, I don't think I, I don't know if this is right, but I don't think the mistake is in setting the goals. I think it's, or self-improving or whatever, but rather in um, how we react right. to them. Is that right? Is that, is, is that, I, I mean, I, I can't not want to do that. Right, like that, that you have to accept the part of you that wants the goals. We all like it's part of human nature. Okay, like, so that's, right. that's good that you clarify that because I was like, yes, I, I think that it's all in, in being light about it right. when, when I, and I, I'm much better than I used to be already, but I certainly can continue to improve in that area. It, it's a difference really between wanting to get to a goal and having to get to it like it's a different yeah. like um yes experience that's, tone to it that's um, how I, I thought about it when I was meditating that that's probably what it is it's yeah. it's more it's, likeness to the yeah. to the goal yeah okay and and like likeness to anything like of course there's a part of you that wants to resolve that conflict between you know like the whatever you had and this is was sort of realizing actually not having to resolve it, being in the space of not having to resolve it. Got it. Yes, that, that's what I was hoping it was. <laughs> so thank you. Okay. I think we have time for one more if anybody else has something to share or ask. Okay, I guess last, going once, going twice, anybody else? <laughs> okay, let's just sit together for a last minute and um, again, just breathing in, noticing this moment, what's happening, listening deeply to yourself, what's happening in yourself at this moment as we're finishing up. together. Just the body right now, the mind right now, the energy right now. Everything as it is. So I would like to just point everybody to the chat. I just saw that we had a couple of things come in. Um, 
before we end up if you have at the moment um, I think um, it's not surprising that you Tosh saw more judgment than you realized and then um, Kelly thank you for this is a quote from Gretchen Rubin yeah really I think this is a false choice um, it's one of my aphorisms. We can accept ourselves and expect more from ourselves. We can show compassion for ourselves and we can also look for ways to make it possible to grow. And I think that what I've been talking about is just making sure that acceptance part is in there. It's not to get rid of the rest. So, okay. Bye everybody, we have one more week next week. Um, you'll get another invitation. You'll get some more homework, um, which is basically if you want to do the exercises again or continue last week's homework. Um, so you'll get that also. Right, and Laura, can you send that or shall I send it to Bram? You can send it to me. Okay, okay, thank uh, you. Uh, if I could say something. I didn't get the invitation for this week. That's why I was late. Oh. I the library and she oh. sent me the link. She uh -huh. sent me the link, but I, I never received it. Okay, um, so make sure you're on the list or send me an email and I'll make sure you're on the link for next time. How do I send you an email? I'm going to give you the email. It's warref, W A R R E F, mm -hmm. at yes. R C L. Oh. S Ramapo Catskill Library System dot org. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> yeah, if anybody else needs to you have the email too. Okay. Okay. See you next week, okay. everybody. Thank, Thank you so much. much. Thank you everybody for coming. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> yes. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Bye. Paul Heathersborn.